Hi everybody, my name is Mr. Francie and welcome back to Mr. Francie Reads. Today we are doing my February monthly wrap, talking all the books that I read in the month of February. <music> Let's put those monthly stats on the screen for the month of February 2022 in three, two, one, go. For the month of February, I read a total of 11 books comprising of 11 cozy mysteries. Therefore, for my age groups, I read 11 adult books. To my lengths, I read six half tomes and five novellas, totaling 2,544 pages. To my star ratings, I had five five stars, three four stars, two three stars, and one two star. So my ratings were really all over the shop, and I'm sure you're wondering why. Well, let's get down to business so I can explain to you why they were all mixed up. <laughs> the first book that I read in the month of February was this book, Glazed Murder by Jessica Beck. With Suzanne, she owns a donut shop. She has broken up with her partner and decided to open up a donut shop, sell donuts. It sounded very exciting and I very much was looking forward to it. I did not enjoy this book at all. In fact, I gave it two stars. So with this woman who is running this donut shop, I was excited to see going in how things would go with the donut shop side of this cozy mystery. Two chapters were kind of culinary kinda not really but kinda and the rest was all mystery we did not focus a lot at all on the donut shop side of things and i personally i don't quite understand why it is called a donut shop mystery series when it's literally only set in a donut shop there wasn't a lot of donut stuff that happened at all yeah i just didn't quite understand it personally i'm gonna move on i gave it two stars the next book that I read was this book, Death in Castle Dark by Veronica Bond. I gave this book 4.5 stars and I, on the whole, really enjoyed it. So the basic premise of this book is that we're following a woman by the name of Nora Blake, I believe, and Nora ends up auditioning for a job at Castle Dark, which is kind of like a dinner theatre situation where if you uh, are hired to work there, you play the role, you are an actor, and you play a role in a made-up murder mystery, and the clients that come to the castle get the opportunity to play their own amateur sleuth and try and work out what is going on. Back in the day, I dabbled in acting, and so I really enjoyed this book, but it went further than the acting. The castle itself I also found to be really intriguing, and there was a whole bunch of interesting and quirky characters in the book that just made this so fantastic. Originally I was set to buddy read this with my dear friend Tiffany from the Beach Bum Bookworm, but ultimately we had a ton of people that were joining us for the read and everyone who read it seemed to love it. So fantastic work Veronica Bond. That is book one in the series and I cannot wait to read book number two, 4.5 stars from me. The next book that I read was this book, which is Death by Chocolate Cherry Cheesecake by Sarah Graves. In this book, we are following a woman by the name of Jake Tiptree, whose full name is Jack Bia, but she prefers to be uh, referred to by her nickname of Jake. Jake and her business partner, Miss Ellie White, run a business called Moose, which is a chocolate bakery. So another chance at a culinary mystery that had me really excited. While this book did have more culinary moments than Glazed Murder, it still didn't have anywhere near as much as I was hoping it would be, which really did let me down. But something that I can definitely give Sarah Graves is the way that she wraps up a book. Her final climax in this book was so thrilling that it almost bordered on going from being a cozy mystery to a cozy thriller for me. I loved the ending. I was on the edge of my seat all the way through the final climax, and I highly recommend this book. Jake ends up finding a uh, someone has been murdered outside of her store when the woman who works next door to her calls her to let her know, and so she and her business partner need to find out 
who the killer is and all that kind of stuff. On the whole, I thought it was okay. I, I, it's interesting. There are some cozies where I love the mystery, but I don't like the cozy side. There are other cozies where I don't, I love the cozy side, but I don't like the mystery side. And then there are other cozies where I don't like either. And then there are other cozies where I love both. And I think with this one, I loved the mystery side, as I said, especially culminating in that extremely thrilling final climax. But for me, the cozy side just really didn't do it for me. So that was unfortunate. But yeah, on the whole, I end up giving this book four stars. The next book that I read, therefore, was book number two in that same series. Death by Chocolate Malted Milkshake by Sarah Graves. So I did not read this book for my own readathon. I read this as one of the two prompts that we originally had for February with the Killing Time with Cozy scavenger hunt. So we need to find a book that featured a wedding and this book definitely did. I found out about that thanks to my dear friend Cozy Rowe. So hi Cozy and thank you so much for helping me out with this one. So this is book number two in that same series. It's called Death by Chocolate, and so it continues on with the story of uh, Ellie White and Jake. I enjoyed the first half of this book a lot less than book one, and that was reflected in my rating. I gave this book three stars, but once again, Sarah Graves writes final climaxes so well, and the final climax of this book was better than the final climax in book one. The next book that I read was this book, which is from one of my favourite series of all time. But first, the title. Premeditated Peppermint by Amanda Flower. I'm holding the book up close because it's a very small book and it's harder to see when it's so far away. <laughs> and I want you to take in all that beauty <laughs> because I love the cover. It's gorgeous. All right, so this is book number three in the Amish Candy Shop series. I have read book one book two uh, and book two prior to coming into this one and I had given both of them five stars which is the maximum you can give. Amanda Flower the author has fast become one of my favorite female authors let alone one of my favorite female cozy authors one of my favorite female authors of all time because of just how much I love her books. So there's not a lot I can say because this is book number three. Amanda Flower just does an amazing job. She really does bring up the culinary side quite a lot compared to a lot of other cozies, which I love. I ultimately gave this book five stars. I can't complain. This series as a whole is absolutely amazing. After reading Premeditated Peppermint, I ended up finding out that the next book in the series was a novella, book 3.5. Because I really desperately wanted to read book four in the month of March, I decided that the very next book I read would be that novella. So the next book that I read was this book, Criminally Coco by Amanda Flower, book 3.5 in the Amish Candy Shop series. Now, there are a few things that changed with this book, but overall the theme did remain the same. One of the first things that changes with this book compared to the other three is that we are following a completely different protagonist. This is someone we have met before. It is Bailey's cousin, Charlotte. Now, Bailey at the end of book three is given an opportunity to go and do something. I'm not going to say what it is because I consider that that would be a spoiler and with this being a novella there's really not a lot of wiggle room for things I can say without spoiling because it's a really short book. But Bailey is given the opportunity to go and do something. So she goes off and does it and takes Charlotte with her. While she is trying to achieve this thing, a lot of things start going wrong. And Charlotte starts to realise that there is more to this than it being a coincidence. So Charlotte decides, being inspired by Bailey, to do a bit of her own amateur sleuthing to try and work out who is plotting against her cousin. I loved this book so much. And you guys, I know that I gave the first three books in the series five stars. If I could, I would have given this 20 out of five stars. I think book 3.5, despite the fact that it was a novella, is arguably my favourite book in the series so far, which is saying something because a lot of readers who love the Amish candy shop don't say that this is their favourite, but I do. I just thought this was so much fun. The next book that I read in the month of February was this book, Murder is Binding by Lorna Barrett. This book is set in a town that has many, many, many bookstores. And what sets them apart is that each bookstore has its own genre. So you have a, for example, a cozy bookstore, 
a mystery bookstore, a sci-fi bookstore, a horror bookstore, and on and on and on we go. I came out of this book giving it an overwhelming five stars. I loved it this book. We are following our protagonist whose name is Trisha. Trisha runs the mystery bookstore. One night, the woman who owns the bookstore next door, which is the cookbook store, lets her know that she has acquired a novella, a very short book, short cookbook, that was written many, 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 many years ago, and the author has long since passed, and this book is worth a whole lot of money. The next thing that our protagonist knows after that day has gone by is that the owner of the cookbook shop has been murdered, and so we're trying to work out who killed her and what. Why? Because it's most likely because of this book. Not uh, not late, not too long after that, however, this novella, worth a lot of money cookbook, winds up in our protagonist's bookshop, making her look incredibly guilty. I gave it five stars. What more can I say? I do highly recommend it. The next book that I read was this book, Double Double Tart and Trouble by Samantha Silva. This is book two in the Witching Flower series, which you probably saw sitting over here just a moment ago, and this is book one, The Witching Flower. I love this series so much, you guys, and I think I think coming into this book, I thought that the reason why I love this series was because The Witching Flower was indeed the very first cozy mystery that I read, and so there's some nostalgia for me attached to the series. But after reading book two, I'm convinced that that's not the case. I am now convinced that I love this series because it is a really good series. So I need to thank my dear friend Jessica from Lady Loves Dead Reads, who recommended this book to me, and because she did, I got to read it, I loved it. Finally got on to book two. Took me a number of months to get there, but I'm definitely going to keep going with the series because I love it oh so much. Now, I ended up giving this book five stars. So, because it is book two, again, there's not a lot I can say, but I love the town of Spelford Cove. I love the fantasy aspects. I love the fantasy aspects of book one. I loved uh, of book one. I love the fantasy aspects of book two even more. And I also liked the mystery of book uh, book two. I thought the mystery in book one was kind of blah, to be honest, but I loved the paranormal and fantasy side of it so much th that it got four stars. But with the book two, the fantasy slash paranormal side was cranked up a number of years, and I really, really appreciated that because I wondered how things would go and if there was a fine line that Samantha Silva didn't want to cross, but nay sir, it was absolutely incredible, the Vampire Knitting series by Nancy Warren. Before I began book one, I found out that there was a novella that came first, book 0 0.5. So that was the first book I read. And that book is this book called Tangles and Treason, Vampire Knitting Club 0 0.5. It is a novella, and I gave this book five stars. So you can probably tell by, from the title of the series, The Vampire Knitting Club, that we are following a bunch of bumbling trolls and witches. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. <laughs> that we are following vampires. And so therefore, book 0 0.5, I'm sure it will not surprise you, talks about at least one of the characters and discusses how they went from being human to becoming a vampire. This book is a book that I am going to call seductively enticing. I was so seduced by this book, you guys, that my only complaint even though it still gets five stars from me, my only complaint was how short it was. I understand, it's a novella. Novellas are meant to be short. Cozy mysteries are short anyway. So a cozy mystery novella is even shorter than a standard novella. I get that. But I just wish that it could have kept going because it was so good. I don't think I've read a better historical vampire book yet. I loved this book from start to end. My only qualm, I wish it was longer. So five stars from me. Which means that the next book I picked up was book one in that series. This book, The Vampire Knitting Club. Book one in the Vampire Knitting Club series. We're following Lucy, who is a descendant of someone that Rafe loved in the novella. Lucy is an American. She has an English uh, parent as well as an American parent. Her grandmother lives over in England and runs a knitting shop. 
Lucy decides that she is going to go down there and spend some time with her grandmother, but when she arrives she can't find her grandmother. So she goes next door to a tea shop that she used to go to all the time with her grandmother and the owner comes out to s tell her that she's so sorry for what happened. And Lucy says, what do you mean you're sorry? And the owner of the tea shop says, oh, well didn't you know my dear? Your grandmother passed away three weeks ago. Well, obviously, this has Lucy saying, well, what the heck? Why did no one tell me? Apparently, everyone had been trying to contact her, but they just couldn't reach her. So, this was a good book. I, I did enjoy this book overall. Again, I'm going to divide my uh, critique on this book based on the two criteriums of a cozy mystery, the cozy side as well as the mystery side. The cozy side really did let me down. Despite the fact that we have a main character who is working in a knitting shop and this is the first time I've experienced this, I felt like it didn't go far enough at all. I felt present in the store with her, but I really felt we could have gone a lot further. I think part of the reason for this is because Lucy is not a knitter at all. In fact, she is a self-proclaimed terrible knitter who would never think of going into a career in a knitting store. The only reason that she's in this store, and I forgot to mention this, is because in her grandmother's will, she has bequeathed the store to her granddaughter with the condition that she at least run it for a year before she sells it in the same way that her grandmother did. So, the cozy side, I just really did not enjoy. But you guys, the vampire side, I loved. But I gave this book three stars. So, the final book that I read in the month of February was this book, A Murderous Macron by Fiona Grace. This book is the second book in the Beachfront Bakery Mystery Series, and I gave this book four stars. Recently, I read book number one a killer cupcake, and I absolutely loved this book. I don't have this book as a physical copy because physical copies of this book don't exist, which is unfortunate because I would like to have the set, <laughs> but unfortunately it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Because this is book two, once again, don't want to spoil. I had some issues with book two. I, I It didn't completely let me down, but it did let me down on some aspects. And the first one was continuity come into book number two and really things just are very different and I don't like when things change up without being able to witness it myself. That annoys me. In saying that, the murder mystery was phenomenal. I absolutely loved it. Alison Sweet as a character is someone that I think I could be best friends with very quickly. She is a never say die type character who is committed to solving a particular murder that occurred. I loved the passion behind Alison wanting to clear her name. The cops end up commandeering her store, which also gives her even more of a driving passion to try and solve this because she wants her store back. And I just really, really appreciated that. The final climaxes were so good. <laughs> you guys were so good. <laughs> Ultimately, I ended up giving this book uh, four stars. Those are all the books that I read in the month of February, and that is where I am going to leave it, letting you guys go with peace, blessings, and so, so, so much love. And I'll see you again soon. Mwah! Thank you for watching. Be kind, love one another, and sparkle that beautiful energy all throughout the entire world. Until next time, happy reading!